of pluralism in the Middle East and North Africa. This region captivated the attention of the world in late 2010, when a series of events in Tunisia catalyzed the Arab Spring. But in many Arab countries, the optimism and hope for a more democratic future have met with resistance and, in some cases, reversal. The region now faces great uncertainty. Pluralism, which we define as respect for diversity, is central to the prospects for democratization in every country of the region. Je suis très heureux de vous voir en si grand nombre ce soir. Je dois vous dire que je, je pense que c'était uniquement quand M. Kofi Annan est venu pour prendre la parole qu'on qu avait autant de monde. Votre appui envers le travail du Centre mondial du pluralisme souligne l'importance de la diversité et de l'inclusion, non seulement ici au Canada, mais dans le reste du monde également. Le Centre mondial du pluralisme est une initiative de son Altesse Lagaka en partenariat avec le gouvernement du Canada. Établi à Ottawa et inspiré par l'expérience canadienne, le Centre offre une plateforme mondiale où partager des expériences de partout dans le monde sur les occasions et les défis de vivre ensemble avec la diversité. This evening's event is in partnership with the Bill Graham Center for Contemporary International History at Trinity College in Toronto. The Bill Graham Center works to bring together scholars, practitioners, and policymakers to engage in cutting-edge research, innovative teaching, and exciting public events. We're very grateful for their partnership and delighted that the Honorable Bill Graham and Professor John English are here tonight. Across the Middle East and North Africa, Tunisia is the only Arab Spring country to have, to have emerged as a success story so far. While still fragile, Tunisia presents important lessons for other transitional and conflict-affected states in the region and beyond. In Tunisia, a broad coalition of non-state actors, known as the Tunisian National Dialogue Quartet, came together and forged the conditions that allowed Islamists and secular politicians and parties to set aside deep mutual suspicion and work together to chart a path away from growing conflict and towards a new constitution. Comme vous le savez déjà, le quartet tunisien vient de recevoir le prix Nobel de la paix. Toutefois, la Tunisie d'aujourd'hui fait face à des défis majeurs d'ordre économique et social et par un environnement externe instable, notamment par le chaos qui persiste dans son pays voisin, la Libye. Il est très important que les progrès réalisés en Tunisie soient consolidés et poursuivis. Les amis de la Tunisie ont la grande responsabilité de soutenir le travail du pays afin d'assurer son avenir démocratique. Ladies and gentlemen, we are honored to have three very distinguished panelists this evening. His Excellency Mehdi Joma, former Prime Minister of Tunisia, previously a senior executive in the aerospace sector. He served as Prime Minister from 2014 to 15, taking office at a time of impending crisis following a series of political assassinations, which led the previous government to step down in favor of a technocratic administration led by Mr. Joma. With great skill and determination, he steered the country out of crisis and to peaceful elections that resulted in a smooth transition of power. Ce fut une réalisation absolument remarquable et un grand acte de service national. Lui et ses ministres, dont Mourad Sakli, qui est ici aujourd'hui, sont arrivés au pouvoir avec un seul objectif, stabiliser euh, la situation et mener le pays aux élections sous la nouvelle Constitution. Après avoir atteint leur objectif, ils ont quitté leur fonction sans s'attendre à aucune forme de gain ou de récompense. He is joined on stage by Dr. Marwan Mwasher, Vice President for Studies at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace and a member of the Global Center for Pluralism's Board of Directors. In 1995, Dr. Mwasher opened Jordan's first embassy in Israel 
and went on to serve as Jordan's ambassador to the United States. From 2002 to 2004, he was Jordan's foreign minister and then deputy prime minister. He's also author of a very compelling book, The Second Arab Awakening and the Battle for Pluralism, and a great op-ed in today's Globe and Mail. Our moderator, Dr. Besmo Mamani, is a senior fellow at the Center for in International Governance Innovation and associate professor of political science at Waterloo University and the Balsillie School of International Affairs. Dr. Momani has written extensively on the IMF and the World Bank, the Middle East, and Arab youth. And she has just published a very stimulating and optimistic book, Arab Dawn, Arab Youth, and the Democratic Dividend They Will Bring. Copies of both these books are available for purchase uh, after the event, and they have kindly agreed to sign copies. So we'll start with opening remarks from Mr. Joma and Dr. Mwasher, and then a discussion moderated by Dr. Momani will follow, and then a Q&A with the audience. So it's my very great pleasure to invite former Prime Minister Joma to the podium. Thank you very much. 